Hi, I'm Kristen Santos Grizzle. I'm Julie Latai. I'm Corinne Stoddard. I'm Sophia Persvirnoff. Last season was pretty bad. <laughs> Are we well, I mean, last season's a little bit unique in that it's the year after the games. Um, so it's kind of different priorities, I think, for a lot of people. Um, I think, obviously, results are still a big focus, but there's also a lot of elements of figuring out other stuff about your racing, maybe you're practicing more tactics, thinking about things you need to work on rather than just going for your best results every time. It's not always as an interesting development. Some top skaters aren't at all the World Cups. More of like easing back into the quad. I think last season, too, a lot of the races were more like real races, like you didn't know who was going to win until like you crossed the finish line and I think that was a lot cooler to see where in previous years you maybe could like suspect who's going to win every race that they do and everything. I feel like it was a little bit more more exciting because there was a lot more unknown. Last season there were actually some pretty fast races too. The world record in the 500 was broken by 0.6. Yeah, five, something, crazy. something crazy like that. A lot of people, even if, even the year after the quad, it's a lot like more chill. Still, some people kind of improve their level a lot that were um, not as good in the previous years because of age or experience level. Um, so a lot of newcomers really popped up last season. When I did watch that 500 meter ra race uh, with the world record. That was really, really impressive. We missed you yeah. last season. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we're kind of figuring that out too for this year because there's some changes. So typically we have six World Cups followed by World Championships. Um, and at each World Cup, one distance is skated twice. And Basically, yeah, so there's like four total races, um, and each athlete can skate up to two races plus the relays. And then one of the <laughs> races this year are gonna have like some extra points added to it because they're trying to get, uh, I guess, more top people fighting or racing each other. Unless it's the Olympic season, I wanted to add, because in the Olympic season usually there's no double distance, there's only three distances, yeah. and every athlete can race up to three distances. Like each country has three spots per distance that's raced. In the Olympic year you can put your best three in whatever distance, and then non-Olympic years it's like up to three per distance, but a max of two per mm -hmm. athlete. Generally, like schedule-wise, it's the six World Cups and one World Championships, like she said, and that usually takes place from around October to March, um, and they're usually in like two-week increments. So, for example, we're about to head to Canada to do our first two World Cups, so that's one weekend after another. Um, and then you have a couple weeks off, and then you head to Asia are usually the next World Cups, um, again, two weeks back to back. And then the last set of World Cups is in Europe. And then World Championships is kind of like a separate thing after that. You guys got all that? <laughs> I feel like I'm a little confused like where they're trying to go with it, with like the new rules that they're adding in. And I feel like there's probably a simpler way to like do it also. Well, yeah, because I originally thought that they were going to just go back to how we do it Olympic year, which is just the three distances and you can race all three or you could race one like it's just how it is at world champs basically um, but then they announced that we're still doing double distance but the second distance if you like what what are the top does everyone top get bonus eight points get or something? Bonus yeah points. top eight get more points than the other distances but winning um, the other distance is still as good as third in the bonus point one or something so yeah so it's it's a little bit different, special. Yeah. So if you guys are confused, we're confused too. <laughs> yeah, I tend to overthink like who's gonna be skating what distance since the pack is split every day. Um, and I think that kind of gives me a little bit of stress going into races is this concept of like, typically one set of the races each day are a bit easier than the other one just because it's not like perfectly evenly split every time and like I get caught in my head of like do I want to be in the easier one where it's easier to win do I want to be racing against the best where it's harder to win but then I'm really like 
getting a better race experience and like kind of, you know, a little bit of a mind game for me. Um, but yeah, so I think like I would love to have more opportunities of just like always racing the best rather than it just come to world champs and it be, it's a lot different when set quarter semifinals are all a lot more competitive than just the final really or semi, you know. Um, or because you don't know like what distances which skaters are going to race, yeah. so you have to decide what distances you want to race, but also thinking about who do you want to race, and it's a little like hard to guess in a way. Yeah, it's pretty weird too. I think the fact that you can only choose two distances to race because it kind of messes with like rankings. I feel in the whole issue that like you could win a distance this weekend, and then say you don't do it the next weekend, someone else who like might have done badly previously now skates it and now they're like above you in the rankings like just because you didn't do yeah. it but it's like you don't always have a choice so you can only do two out of the four distances so I think that makes it hard to have always a super like honest or like true ranking system because people literally just don't have the chance to do like yeah like sometimes, all the races yeah, well, some, uh, or, yeah sometimes it just comes down to who skates the distance more right. and not who's actually like better at the distance, mm, yeah. which can be a little bit mm -hmm. frustrating. Uh, <laughs> like so, at the end of the World Cup season, there's an overall ranking for each distance, and it's your best six out of eight results. But the problem a little bit with that is that if you, only, if you race all three distances, you're never going to have one distance that you had six results in. Yeah. So you have somewhat, you have to pick that you're only racing two distances that season and then you wouldn't race that third distance and then you get to world champs and that's the first time you're racing that distance all season like that's what happened to me last season is I only raced five and thousand um, the whole season of world cups because I wanted at least like six good results um, in two distances to be like in the top ten but then when I got to world champs I hadn't raced a 1500 meter all season so yeah. I think it would be a little better if it was like your best four out of eight results or something yeah. like that where you, you get a chance to race all three distances instead of just picking two distances. And you still can pick all three, but then you're just not going to have the best result as you could have yeah. had So you're because like, you don't have six good results. Yeah, you have like or five, six at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like five races you got points in and you're going against people who have six races they got points in. So you're at an automatic like disadvantage. Yeah, kind yeah. of like... We were in an opposite boat last year where I tried to race every distance, but like I can only, if you race every distance equally, you can only have a max of four point, four like placements per distance to count towards the overall in those distances. So like automatically where people had six points that count, like I only have four. So I like have to, you have to do that much better in your only four to be able to like have a good placement. Which means you can't really screw up either, because yeah. if you screw up one time, then you only have three good results. So yeah. it's kind of a little bit hard to really get the best yeah. overall ranking and still race all the distances. It's like, we're not made to be specialized, but then part of it is making us to be specialized. Yeah. yeah. It's a little bit... Yeah, I feel like in short track it's not like not like in long track people people specialize there's like pure sprinters but most of generally like people race everything. Yeah. Like at World Champs you gotta race everything. So it's yeah. kinda hard. I think the relays are so exciting. I think yeah, they're, so they're my much favorite. Fun. Um I think like they can be more nerve-wracking because you're not just like competing for yourself but I think it's like way more exciting to kind of go into something as a team mm -hmm. I think especially like the mixed relay is like the most exciting race I think to watch and be a part of um, can also be frustrating because like one mess up and like it's so quick that like that can completely screw you over um, where I think like the women's and men's relay one mess up you can have somewhat of a chance to recover from it but yeah yeah I think it's pretty cool how it like turns the sport from being like purely individual to being a team sport which is yeah. pretty cool yeah. it's like I mean you have that in maybe like running track and stuff too but it's a pretty rare thing that you have like such an individual sport transform into a team sport and adds a lot of dimensions to your 
everyday life at practice too. Like you're not just there at practice for yourself anymore. Now you're also there for your teammates. And I also think adding the mixed relay is a pretty kind of like progressive step to take too. Like, I don't know, kind of adding a new dimension to all sports that you can have like men and women competing with and against each other is pretty unique too. So I think that's a cool addition. Yeah, I think especially the mixed relay, like you said, there's no room for error. Like in the gender relay, if you miss an exchange or you have to, or somebody makes a pass, you can just make the exchange on the next like side or the next lap. Versus the mixed relay, you have to make an exchange on that specific side at a certain lap. And if you don't, you're automatically disqualified. Um, so it's really like interesting watching people's tactics. Like maybe they could have made a move on that last straightaway before the exchange, but they didn't because their teammate wouldn't have made the exchange. It's just, it's really cool to see the like teamwork, I think, in the mixed relay. Also teams get better uh, at that yeah. like every year. Uh, yeah, I had so much fun racing relays, women's and mixed. But as Corey said, on the mixed relay, there's one tiny mistake and then you're automatically out. Like next year and like in the next years, just teams are going to get better at it and it's going to be even more exciting to watch. I think relays too depend a lot on like the quality of like the relationships you have with your teammates too. I mean, that's true in every sport, but I feel like I've never seen a sport where it seems to correlate so directly, where you can have a team of girls or guys or a mixed team that are just maybe not at the same level, like individually as other skaters on other teams, but they have really great like camaraderie and teamwork and like passion together. And they skate amazing when it comes to a relay on this like team event Thank you guys. and like <laughs> um, other, other countries that have like super experienced or like, I know within the US we've had times where we have a team that like is comprised of multiple medalists, like people who should be just like dominating, but they didn't have the teamwork and it didn't work out. Whereas, yeah, like when I first came here, I feel like none of us had really medaled before, like individually, we had people who were good and getting better, but no one who was like meddling consistently at all. And we were still able to, I feel like perform way above what our like ceiling should have been. And I think that was just because our teamwork and like shared goal was really clear and like important to us. So I think that's a cool aspect of it too. I think the relay is also like a really good precursor for like improving in the circuit um, and a good motivator for it too. Sometimes like it's a way to really like race in the mix of things when you maybe aren't quite there yet individually. So I think it's like a really good motivator and a way to give people experience as well. And I feel like a lot of people who maybe aren't quite there individually, like originally their focus is like, I want to be as best as I can for the relay. And I think that's like a really great way to, to improve and then eventually get there individually as well. And it's, I just think it's like kind of what progresses a lot of people forward in the sport. Sometimes we feel like relays get a rap of being not, like you get a medal in a relay, sometimes it's not perceived as important as like an individual medal, but we don't really understand, like we don't really agree or really understand where that comes from. So we think it's just as legitimate and like impressive that you have a whole group and depth of people that can yeah. achieve that. Um, but in terms of stress, I will say I think mixed relay, especially the first couple times you're doing it, like if you're coming out for the guy, that could be like pretty stressful to get used to, especially if it's like, I remember my first time doing it in like a B final or something and I was like, I have to get this right. Like not much room for error, like we've said. See, it's yeah. funny to me that you say that because I think mixed relay is the least stressful. I think that one because you just like so go. Stressful. It's just like no thought behind it. You all just go from the start and you go from the line and it is what it is. I agree because it's like you go and then you have a longer break and then you go again and I think the longer break makes it less stressful but <clears throat> if I'm coming out for a guy that one exchange is like no, that makes especially sense. because you also have to start. You can have yeah right true. Now. Yeah I, I'm <laughs> usually the one that starts in the mix relay and coming out for the boy never gets less stressful for me because I have to be watching because like Whoever's finishing, like whoever's the fourth boy or the second boy, the fourth person in the relay, like I have to make sure that I'm in the right position because they could make a pass on that straight away before my exchange. And I also have to make sure my timing is right when they're going like low eight second laps. Yeah. And then I have to hold the corner, corner after, where yeah. the ice is already pretty chewed up because everyone's already skated on it. And I have to like try and, to skate through the corner but also not slip out. It's just, yeah, I never get less stressed about that part.
I think for short track, like the biggest thing is the mental aspect of it. Um, like going into races, there's so much that's unknown in a race. Like you can't control what this person's gonna do, this person's gonna do, how the race is gonna play out. It's not about just going out there and like just full purely at being skating your own race because you have to be able to adjust and make difference, like make changes on a whim. And I think that that's like the biggest thing that at least I struggle with is like this concept of not being able to control what other people do. Um, perfect world, I would be able to, and that'd be great. Um, but I just think like so many of us on the circuit, like we're all so strong, we're all fast, we're all this, and it really comes down to like who can stay composed in a race and who knows when to make a move, when to not. So kind of like men the mental aspect mixed with like strategy, I think is so important. And like really just knowing like that you have time in a race and like being confident that you can take advantage of that time and that like two laps is really short, but it's also really long and a lot can happen. I think the level of like going on with the mental part, I think a level of like confidence and cockiness a little bit too is very required, um, which is yeah also difficult. But I think beyond mental, I think at least the next important thing I think is technique. I think that technique is more important than fitness or like strength, honestly. I feel like short track is weird in that you see a decent amount of people who are maybe not super athletic at like anything else or anything, but then when they get what? on the ice, like they can just like whip out whatever they want. And I think you can tell when there's people, someone who has like the right technique for them. So I think it's a really unique and individual thing. Like there's not one technique that you can just prescribe to everyone. And you can tell when someone has found like the exact right technique that they need for themselves. It just looks so natural, so easy, and they are usually really, really skaters um, so I think figuring out like what your own specific technique is is like extremely important and more so than overall fitness um, I agree technique and feel for the ice is really important just because me coming from inline I really struggled with that because it's such a different sport compared to inline I mean it's low speed skating but it's completely different at least for short track um, so uh, I think feel and technique is really important in that aspect but also I think heart has a lot to do with it like you can I've seen so many skaters that could be so good and, and they're just like naturals at the sport but they don't have the heart for it so they don't they don't go as hard as they could in training and racing you know what I mean no, no, but I agree, like yeah, I feel like heart and like determination is also really important for track because if you don't have the will to like go to the point of failure and like pain basically I think natural talent gets you really far in the sport when you're a kid, but I think natural talent often like fails you once you grow up and you feel all the lactic acid that you're gonna feel and it requires like so much dedication. I feel like natural talent, yeah, can fail you if you don't have hard work to back it up a lot. Because a lot of the times people with natural talent never learn how to push through the pain. Um, so once they start feeling pain and the level starts going farther up and I mean the World Cup circuit like the level is really high like the top 20 skaters anyone could be in a final type thing so I think if, if you don't work hard you don't have the heart to push through that pain it's yeah yeah I think it's like an interesting sport where not that it's easy but like it's not that hard to be like decent at the sport but it's really really hard to be one of the best and like there's such a big like gap between those two and so I think a lot of people will get to the point too where they're like I'm I'm pretty good at it and like that's good enough um, but yeah it's having that drive to like push yourself even further to be like to have your mindset on being the best rather than just being good yeah and I think when you are at a level where you're going up against really good people might be at a similar level that's again where it comes to like the heart and the mental like like I'll be on the line sometimes and be like this person is as good or better than me but I know I'm willing to go through more pain than them to like do well in this race and that's the kind of stuff that gives you a level up on people and where like your mental can really like elevate you um, yeah, beyond or like the opposite too of 
where you are better than someone on the race, but you overestimate them too much and spend the whole race focusing on what they're gonna do even though you should beat them easy and then instead you're just so like hyper focused on what this person's gonna do that you end up like losing your own sense of skating. So it can go like both ways. Yeah, I would agree with everything. Also want to add that learning how to fail and bounce back because in short track you go through so many races during the season that of course not everyone, not all of them is going to be perfect and good. Uh, fall happens, DQ happens, everything happens and you just got to learn how to bounce back there and like keep fighting and improving. Yeah, good point. Yeah, not only bounce back for the race the next weekend, but literally a race 20 that could minutes. be 20 minutes later. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that that's a big like difference too between the sport from other things. It's just like the how fast the turnaround is in races. So like not only being physically fit to be able to do six plus races in a day, but also like ment mentally capable to push through that. Yeah, resilience, being able to let that shit go. I mean, it's kind of, I feel like almost more similar to a post-Olympic year than like last year was. Like there's yeah. more top people taking a break or who's not gonna be there this season than last Probably year. So I think yeah. that's kind of interest. I think it'll be, even Corey, the Corey already touched that last year was like this. I think even more so it's gonna open up new opportunities for people who have been on the come up for a while to like have their chance to see, see what happens when they're like mixing it up with the best people. And I think that that's gonna like change the game for the rest of the quad. I think once you get a taste of that, it's hard to let that go, so. Uh, there's a couple new Korean girls coming onto the circuit, so that could be interesting. Um, the Liu brothers are back. Oh yeah. Skating for China now. Uh, so yeah, we have some people that usually would be there that aren't, but then we also have some new people or people that weren't there last year, so it could be interesting. These two, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited but, uh, for Dutch girls also. Yeah. Uh, there's yeah. some new names. Uh, we're gonna, it's gonna be interesting to follow Sandra and her sister. Yeah. yeah. She's been improving a lot. See if they can kind of fill Suzanne's shoes in her absence yeah. or not. Yeah. See what'll happen. Yeah, I think Sandra really had like a breakout season yeah. last year. I think like she's obviously always been good, but last year she was like a dominant yeah, force level. out there and her speed is insane. Um, so I'm like, I'm, I think it'll be exciting to watch her build off of that. Mm -hmm. um, I think like a lot of the Canadian girls are always amazing and they're, when we were talking about like a team camaraderie, I yeah. feel like the Canadian girls really know how to like pull it together for team yeah. events as well. I feel like it's cool to yeah. watch them race because it's like such a consistent group of girls. So like yeah. watching how they are improving and developing. Um, and then yeah, sharing a locker room with them, you see a lot of like team camaraderie and stuff. So that's always cool too, something that we want to replicate as well. But yeah, I think the door will be open this year for a lot of different people on the podium, um, just with so many absences for at least this first half of the season. We're kind of cooler than long track. Yeah, that's yeah. the last thing. We're, <laughs> most, we're actually a lot better than long track. <laughs> 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 <laughs>